Welcome to the next lesson in our course, Basic Beginners Free CAD for FreeCAD version 1. This is an updated version of the original lesson, which brings everything in line with the current release. In our previous lesson, we looked at how to navigate around FreeCAD's 3D views and panels, learning important core skills necessary for any 3D CAD environment. In this lesson, we're going to explore the differences between surface modeling and solid modeling and how that influences the choice between workbenches. There are two distinct approaches when creating 3D models, solid and surface modeling. Let's have a look at two example models side by side. We see that the solid modeling process creates a model that is complete with volume and or internal structure. This allows it to be fabricated such as 3D printed without any post-processing. In contrast, the other model is created using the surface modeling approach. It's made up of an external skin or a number of skins. In other words, a surface. These surfaces are infinitely thin and depending on the fabrication process may require thickening into a solid form. For example, when we 3D print it. So why do both these approaches exist when the aim is often to produce a solid for manufacturing or printing? Surface modeling has a distinct advantage. It's better for complex forms as it gives you direct control over vertices, edges and faces. Working with a single skin also allows for quicker prototyping. Since creating a complex form requires both the outer and inner skins to be defined if we was taking a solid modeling approach as we need to give it volume. Because surface modeling is a complex subject, we will begin with the solid modeling approach. This leads us to the next choice, which workbench to use. We see FreeCAD has numerous workbenches. These are available in our workbench selector and also can be installed from third party workbenches. But there are two core workbenches used for 3D modeling, part and part design. The part design workbench offers a more structured approach than part, making it easier for solid modeling, though less flexible overall. Its main benefits is that it reduces the number of operations needed to build a model. For example, to create this tube flange, in the part design, we first need to create a 2D cross section known as a profile. We then apply an operation to the profile to remove, or as in this case, to add volume. This creates a feature. We then create another 2D profile that is attached or positioned in some way and use a second operation to create another feature. The two features are automatically fused together to maintain a single solid. In contrast, in the part workbench, we can follow the same steps, except the features are not automatically combined. They remain separate until we explicitly perform either a fusion or a subtraction operation. Alternatively, we can group them using a compound which appears as a single body, but isn't truly fused together, though it can be still used for physical output. The part workbench therefore supports various object types, solids, surface, compounds, and also hybrid forms. The absence of automatic combination creates a nested workflow, and this can be visible from the tree view. Part design, on the other hand, produces a linear workflow. Each operation creates a new feature, building on top of the previous one, with the current feature known as the tip. This creates a unique tree view visualization of the project and allows you to move backwards through the history by ascending the list. We can even branch from previous operations, diverting your modeling along two different paths, allowing you to create two distinct versions of your model with unique features. There are lessons in this course where you'll be able to practice that technique and understand the various applications it can be used for. Part design only allows for solids and solid compounds. Part workbench becomes much more flexible as it isn't governed by these strict rules. This allows to be integrated into many other workflows, such as those supplied by third party workbenches. Part design can also integrate with such workbenches, but the geometry they produce must be rooted into the workflow using specific tools, such as binders or base features. Again, we will learn about these in the course. 
Now we understand which workbench to choose, we can start modeling. And we'll start that in our next lesson. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.